want it, get it, don't ever give up, you got it, you wanna make it, then chase it, no one can stop you, stop you, they're gonna hate you, hate you, but let them hate you, this fine, cause if they stand in your way, then you gotta leave them behind. Yo, what is going on guys? It is Sam Orr Burns and welcome to week 13 of the South Alabama Dynasty. Yes, the long-awaited week 13 here in year 2 is here as this week's opponent is the Georgia State Panthers led by head coach Ian Vogt. Many of you know him as straight out of Boston. So, last year he beat me pretty handily. I mean, it was a pretty good game uh, up until the end and he did end up pulling away at the end for the victory. So, he does lead this new rivalry here between South Alabama and Georgia State. 1-0 uh, so far, but we're going to go ahead and look at some of the top stories real quick coming into this game. I think we're ranked like 30th in the country right now, so a win here could potentially put us over the edge uh, to being in the top 25. Maybe we'll be there by the end of the year, hopefully. I don't know. We'll see, but you'll see the top 25 right here. Um, Wisconsin and Florida, your last two spots. And you see we aren't getting any votes yet, but looking at the Sun Belt, uh, conference uh, the Sun Division standings uh, we're obviously on top right there when here would clinch a berth in the conference championship game and this is a really big game for Georgia State as they are in a very tight division race so we'll see what happens uh, in this game but here we are looking at the Heisman race really quick Braxton Miller and the fullback who I believe is probably playing at tailback because he gets mad stats uh, on top right there so uh, an Ohio State player is more than likely going to end up winning the uh, Heisman, but right now we're projected to play in the New Orleans Bowl against East Carolina. That'd be a pretty good game. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. And uh, Georgia State is projected to play in the BBVA Compass Bowl, I believe. I don't know. We'll see where they go. Um, but anyways, we're going to do a little coaching upgrade right here. Uh, defensive coordinator and offense coordinator. We did that pretty quick. But you'll see our team stats. Uh, we are first in the nation in points per game. His offense not as prolific as ours, but he does have a little better defense. So getting into this game in the shotgun set is Ronnie Bell, the junior quarterback. He's back to pass looking over the middle for Drew Pearson, and that is a 10-yard game for Pearson right there on the first play of the game. And now on second and inches, Ronnie Bell here is going to be running the option to the right, and he pitches it right to Terrell Brigham. That's a turnover on just the second play of the game. And right there, Brandon Bridge in this offense takes over. Brandon Bridge here on the read option up the middle. He's going to go ahead and get seven yards right there, make it a second down and three, his first carry of the day. And on second three, handing off to Jay Jones on the right side. He's to the 15, the 10, and he'll cut inside down to about the five-yard line. That's a 16-yard game for Jay Jones as the Jaguars are looking to punch us in. And now here on second and goal, Bridge in the shotgun. Back to pass over the middle. He finds Matt Harris for the eight-yard touchdown, and that is good for a 7-0 Jaguars lead. So, Brand uh, not Brandon Bridge, excuse me. Ronnie Bell here in the Georgia State offense is going to back on the field here, handing off to Gerald House. That is a 10-yard gain. Now a second down and 12. Ronnie Bell here is running up the middle on the read option, and that is a 9-yard gain for Ronnie Bell. Third down and three now for this Georgia State offense, but they would end up having to punt. So that sets up a third down and eight for Brandon Bridge in this offense. A screenplay to Jay Jones. Can he get the first down? He does there on third and eight. That's a 10 yard gain for Jay Jones there on the screenplay. Now a third down and five. Bridge is back to pass. Nowhere really to go. He has a man open deep, but he underthrows him, and it's intercepted right there by the Georgia State defender. And you see straight out of Boston just trolling me right there in the end zone basically taunting me on that pick. I don't know who picked that, but it was a bad throw nonetheless by uh, Brandon Bridge. So Gerald House now here, a seven yard gain for him. And Ronnie Bell here is gonna be handing off to Kyler Neal on the left side. And he avoids a tackle and will go ahead and get eight yards right there. That is his first carry of the day. So now he's second down and two. Play action pass to Kyler Neal here at the end of the first quarter. And Ronnie Bell is going to find Ross Jackson for a 10-yard gain. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter with a 7-0 South Alabama lead. So looking much better than last year. And here we go, third down and 10. Ronnie Bell throws an incomplete pass, which will set up a fourth down. And here, kind of in no man's land, the Panthers are going to go for it. And a play action pass, Ronnie Bell. Lots of time to throw, and he's going to go ahead and find Joel Ruiz, a 14-yard gain for the big tight end. Now a third down and seven for Ronnie Bell. He's back to pass, looking on the slant play. That is Ross Jackson, I believe, a 17-yard gain for Jackson. I hate how Georgia State doesn't have names on the back of the jerseys because I can't really tell uh, who's who. But anyways, that brings us to a fourth down and goal, and the Panthers elect to kick the field goal, and he squeaks it inside the upright. 
to make it a 7-3 ball game. So Brandon Bridge and this offense, third down and five. Bridge is going to go ahead and find Matt Harris for a nine-yard gain. And that is a good uh, is good enough for a first down. But nonetheless, the Jaguars would end up having to punt back to the Panthers. And Georgia State, he throws an interception. Ronnie Bell is going to find Mr. Lavelle. I'm just rhyming because I can. Anyways, that's a turnover right now. A minute to go here in the first half. Brandon Bridge is going to be rolling out to his right. Nowhere really to go. And he is just going to take off running. Avoids a tackler. And he is going to get out across the first down. That's a 10-yard gain. Now first down and 10. Bridge. Back to pass. He is again going to pump fake. What a pump fake right there. What a play. And he finds Kyle Clifford for 16 yards. Great play right there by Ronnie Bell on keeping the play. Or not Ronnie Bell, excuse me. Brandon Bridge on keeping the play alive right there. And here throwing into triple cover is just not a smart throw right there by Brandon Bridge. And that is intercepted to end the half. So Georgia State and South Alabama going to the halftime 7-3. And the Jaguars do get the ball here to start the second half. And that is a six-yard gain for Jay Jones to start us off. He has had a phenomenal season. I think he's up over 1,300 yards now, which is awesome. We, that's something we didn't have last year. And uh, right there, something been really prevalent throughout the season. Brandon Bridge throwing an interception in our own territory, which is very bad. And now here's Kyler Neal on the screen pass. And he goes into the end zone untouched as the Panthers take a 10-7 lead. That's a 31-yard touchdown catch for Kyler Neal on the screen pass from Ronnie Bell. And now Bridge here is going to be looking for Matt Harris, the team's leading receiver on second and 11, is going to get 17 yards right there on the curl route. And now here we go, a second down and nine. Brandon Bridge is back to pass. He's going to go over the middle to Kyle Clifford. And that's going to be a third down and one for Clifford. He's going to get seven yards right there. And now second down and five here for Ronnie Bell as the, Panther, the Jaguars would have to punt. So Georgia State taking over, and oh, big hit. I think he was like in the process of pitching it or something. I don't know what happened, but it ends up being just a one-yard loss right there for Georgia State, which is big right here, a fourth down and one. We'll see if it ends up mattering. Ronnie Bell going to Kyler Neal, and he almost pitches it. I think something was up with uh, Strader Boston's controller or, or something. I don't know. Something was going on, but anyways, Brandon Bridge back to pass here, first down 10 after that stop on fourth down, and he has a lot of room to run. He's out across the 50 to about the 45 before he steps out of bounds, an 18-yard gain for Brandon Bridge. Now second down and eight, Bridge is back to pass, and he is going to be rolling to his right side, and he will take off running. Brandon Bridge making guys miss in the open field, and that is a 14-yard gain for Brandon Bridge right there on second down and eight. He's up to 38 yards rushing so far. Now here, a minute 27 left in the third quarter, fourth down and 11. Uh, gun. I honestly don't know my kicker's first name, but he is going to get this 47-yard field goal to go, and that will make this ball game 10-10 here. And now 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ronnie Bell is back to pass third down and four. He is going to find Ross Jackson, who breaks a tackle. He's out across the 45-40, and he's pushed out at about the 36-yard line, a 29-yard game for Ross Jackson. And now five seconds to go here in the third quarter. Ronnie Bell is going to find, I believe that's Drew Pearson, and he almost pitches it. That's a 20-yard gain for Drew Pearson and this Georgia State offense. Now a third down and nine with 6.41 remaining in this ball game. Ronnie Bell in the shotgun, empty backfield. He is back to pass hit as he throws, and that could have been intercepted right there by Montel Gardner, who I believe is second in the nation in interceptions, but instead that is a touchdown for Ronnie Bell and this Panthers offense. So 6.30 remaining here in this uh, ball game. Matt Harris is doing some nifty moves out there on the right side to get a first down for the Jaguars. Now a third down and six. Bridge back to pass. He is going to find Jeremy Jones, but he can't hang on. So about 5.40 remaining, and the fact that we couldn't stop Georgia State at all, we go for it, and Hendricks, he goes a little backwards, and then he fumbles on, like, a pitch or something. I don't know what that was, but Georgia State picks it up and is into the end zone. So a 14-point ball game now uh, with only 5.5 remaining. So Brandon Bridge and this offense is in a hole. So Matt Harris here, the trusty wide receiver, is going to go ahead and get about 15 yards right there on the curl route and now bridge back to pass once again looking for Jay Jones on the screenplay he makes a guy miss with a beautiful juke move and then he is out to the left side he's out across the 25 20 15 down to about the 14 yard line big gain for Jay Jones on the screen pass now bridge here is going to be rolling to his right side he is going to take off running he's got some blocks and he's out across the first down line before he trips over the goal goal line sign if that's what you want to call it but the third down and goal 350 remaining bridge back to pass and over the middle and he finds Kyle Clifford but he drops it fourth and goal 347 remaining this could be considered your ball game Brandon Bridge back to pass and he is going to be looking in the end zone almost intercepted on the diving attempt but Matt Harris is in the end zone for his second touchdown catch of the day so 
24-17, your score. First down and 10 now for Ronnie Bell in this offense. Bell, they're throwing surprisingly, not trying to run down the clock. And that is a first down here with three and a half minutes to go. Third down and three now, minute 50 remaining. Ronnie Bell back to pass. He is going to find Drew Pearson. And Pearson's out across the first down with a minute 47 remaining. The Jaguars electing not to use their timeouts yet, hoping for a stop. Ronnie Bell handing off to Kyler Neal, and he pitches way back. And what just happened? Ronnie Bell picks it up, luckily, and he slides down at the 40-yard line. But that is a 17-yard loss, and Jaguars use their first timeout. Now, one timeout remaining for the Jaguars, third and 23 for Georgia State. And he is going to be batted down right there by, I don't know that guy's name, Hawkins, it looks like. So, anyways, third down and 10 now. 50 seconds remaining for Brandon Bridge. He finds Kyle Clifford, but he is short. And the Jaguars are going to go ahead and have to run some no huddle. Fourth down and one. Handed off to Jay Jones. Very risky play call, but it ends up paying off. The star running back gets the first down. And now 30 seconds remaining. Bridge looking to the sideline. First down and 10. Brandon Bridge is back to pass. He's going to be scrambling to his right side. He's got a man out across the sideline. It's Jeremy Jones, but he drops another pass. Second down and 10 now. 20 seconds to go. Bridge back to pass. He's scrambling. He's got a man deep. He unloads. It's Dejan Funderbunk with the catch. And he is down inside the 15-yard line to about the 13. He's hurt on the play, but what a big play it was. No timeouts remaining now for the Jaguars. 10 seconds to go. Brandon Bridge just going to take off. And he goes into the end zone untouched touch and we are tied at 24 and now here we are in the first overtime uh, Ronnie Bell gonna go ahead and find I don't know that guy's name honestly Linquez Blair maybe and anyways a first down and goal Ronnie Bell handed off to Gerald House up the middle and he will get into the end zone here in the first overtime for the first score of this overtime Georgia State takes a 31 24 lead so now it's the Jaguars turns turn excuse me Brandon Bridge looking over the middle on the slant play for Matt Harris that is a first down for Matt Harris now second down seven empty backfield Bridge going over the middle he finds Jeremy Jones for the first down but he gets laid out but he does actually hang on to the ball this time now second down and goal Bridge trying to QB sneak in the end zone but he fumbles that could have been the ball game but the offensive lineman luckily picks it up now third down and goal Jeremy Jones or Jay Jones excuse me going to go into the end zone and that is the school record for rushing touchdowns in the season. But anyways, Brandon Bridge back to pass. He got Jer or Jay Jones, excuse me, on the right side. And here on the first play of the second overtime is into the end zone. Goes 25 yards right there on the screenplay. So a 38-31 lead now for the Jaguars. And it is Georgia State's turn. First down and 10. The Panthers going to go ahead and Kyler Neal breaking some tackles. And he is down inside the 10 to about the 6-yard line. That brings up a first down and goal for Georgia State and this. Uh, offense led by Ronnie Bell third and goal now here is a pass to Drew Pearson for the touchdown great play right there by Ronnie Bell but now second down and five here in the third overtime and I want to remind you if anyone scores they have to go for two and right there great pass by Ronnie Bell down to about the one yard line and Bell here is just going to take it in himself to make this a 44-38 ball game but Georgia State has to go for two right here Ronnie Bell in the shotgun two backs in front of him they elect to throw the ball and he is going to go on the left side is that dropped is it batted down can't really tell but nonetheless Georgia State cannot convert so a third down and six now for Brandon Bridge in this offense getting pretty nervous right here Bridge is going to go ahead and find Jay Jones on the screenplay and he is out across the first down he cuts inside and he is down to the five yard line here we go Jaguars driving I mean it's not really driving but they are inside the five yard line and Bridge now back to pass he is going to be rolling to his right side and he just avoids some tackles and weaves his way into the end zone and we got ourselves a tie ball game at 44 here we go Jaguars convert this it is the ball game if not we go to a fourth overtime bridge empty backfield is back to pass and he fires on the right side for TJ Glover and this ball game is over the South Alabama Jaguars even up this rivalry series one to one with a 46 44 victory in triple overtime what a victory it was and with that, the Jaguars improve to 9-2 and two on the season with only one game against Idaho remaining. That all but clinches a berth in the first inaugural Sun Belt Championship game. So you'll, gotta, you'll get a look at some team stats here, and then we'll move into a coaching upgrade. But anyways, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy. And again, big game, big win, and we're looking good this season on our way to a bowl game. So anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy. And as always, I'm out. Peace.